like well, while you getting the exact info, while well, I'm all for like changing the all-star game. Like I feel like Darius Garland, if I'm saying it from Cleveland, he deserved to go. But Andrew Wiggins starting. But you know, part of the starting thing was the fan votes. And Golden State had made a genius move making one of the um K-pop rappers out in Thailand their ambassador. And he put out a tweet in support of Andrew Wiggins and it got like it went viral. So part of the fan votes was because of that. And that's partially how Andrew Wiggins became a starter over like Devin Booker and some of these other guys. Now, who didn't make the all-star game this year? What do you think about LaMelo Ball not making it? I feel I feel like he should have made it. Like, like all the way, like how his father advertised him, he is doing everything that he's supposed to do. Like, come on. Like, even if Lonzo wouldn't have got injured, he was putting up all-star numbers. Yep. But thank you, fans, for getting it right, for putting DeMar DeRozan in there. So at the shooting guard, who didn't make it? Kyrie didn't make it, Bradley Beal didn't make it, and Jalen Brown didn't make it. They got that right. Small forwards that did not make the all-star team, Paul George and Anthony Edwards. Anthony Edwards is a small forward? Well, that's how they got it as far as the position that they would play. You know, Kyrie is listed as a point guard, but in the um, game itself, like they got it broken down for Javante Murray, LaMelo Ball, and Gildas Alexandra at the points who were snubbed. For the shooting guards, Kyrie, Bradley Beal, and Jalen Brown. Paul George, Anthony Edwards at the small forwards. Pascal Siakam and Dumanis Sabonis at the power forwards. And Anthony Davis and Jared Allen. They got them as the centers who were snubbed. Jared Allen was snubbed. Yo, Brooklyn is stupid for giving him up, bro. He is a monster. Do you disagree with the L.A. guys, Paul George and Anthony Davis? I mean, they've been hurt, so you really don't have an argument. But yeah. you think they should have made it? Paul George. Nah, Paul George shouldn't have made it, bro. He might be out for the season. Like, What about A.D.? No. No. No, no, no. Why? We're not giving no more passes to LeBron people. But what I'm saying is with A.D., when we seen him on the court, he's not played an all-star level when he's played. When he's played, AD has been AD, but nope, you're playing a team with LeBron. No more extra passes for LeBron people. Lakers ain't getting no one other than LeBron to make the All-Star team. I'm a little bit surprised that he's the only Laker that's going to be in the All-Star game. Well, who else from the Los Angeles nursing home was supposed to make it? Well, I would have just, I mean, I definitely would have went with AD. Like, I know he's been injured, so if you want to use that as the argument, I'm, I can agree with that. But as far as what we've seen on the court when he has played, and knowing who he is, he's a champion. He's been an all-star any other year. I would have put him down just for his name if he's able to play. The two biggest snubs for the all-star game for me is Jared Allen and LaMelo Ball. Like Those are the two guys. Yeah, and Anthony Edwards, he having a good a good year. But I don't know about putting him as a small forward, though. Like, what? How tall is he? Is he what six five, six six seven? I don't know. I don't know about Anthony Edwards uh, at a small forward. I got you. Now you brought up the Brooklyn Nets a couple minutes ago. You realize their big three: Kyrie, Kevin Durant, James Harden has only played sixteen games together since Harden came over. I, I did not even know that. That's amazing. 16 games together. Now, they're currently on a seven-game losing streak. No team in NBA history has ever won an NBA championship after having a losing streak of seven or more games. Right now, they two and eight since Kevin Durant's injury. I think it's over for Brooklyn. I was never sold on them. Even when they was first constructed, I said that I wasn't sold on them defensively, so I didn't see them winning championships. But now... It seemed like they just self-destructing. James Harden name being in trades, Kyrie playing halftime, and um, KD is hurt. What you think about Brooklyn and their demise? It's kind of sad to see because I at least thought they was going to win the chip last year. You know, that was a Kevin Durant that played, game. judged the game by inches. That's right. crazy. 
But the crazy part is, like, I don't blame Kyrie Irving for what he's doing this year. Like, because the way New York is getting, like, hit by this vaccine mandate is out of everybody's control. And it's kind of like, it's not right what people have to go through. Because, you know, I didn't even believe in a vaccine. And I was forced to get it if I wanted to continue to pay my right. bills. So I'm not mad at Kyrie for that. But for James Harden to be like, I want to request a trade. I'm mad with Kyrie and this and that. James Harden is a girl. Look at the people James Harden has played with over his career. Chris Paul, Dwight Howard, Russell Westbrook, Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, and possibly Joel Embiid if this trade goes down. Can you imagine if James Harden would wind up winning no rings in his career but got to play with all those guys? I think you had to look at him and and take him down a, a couple notches as far as his all-time greatness. If that's the case, if he ends up playing with all those people and di- and doesn't win a ring, he's just a glorified scorer, scorer in history. Gotcha. Books. Gotcha. That's all. Got gotcha. you. Yeah, this thing looked like it's about to blow up. I just don't see Brooklyn winning the championship this year. And I think both K- I think both Kyrie and James Harden can be out of Brooklyn. By next season, KD might be stuck alone in Brooklyn. Would you think about the reality of that? He might not be stuck alone if this Ben Simmons trade happened, because then we got to speak about how would it look with Kyrie Irving, Ben Simmons, and KD. It's interesting, man. Like Injuries has always played a role in the NBA, but these last couple seasons, along with COVID, Injuries have really changed the trajectory of some of these organizations win or lose. It's just so interesting, man, how this shit is playing out. D-Money, what's up? 42, what's up, man? We're just chopping it up, talking about the Brooklyn Nets, their demise, and their chances of oh, boy. making a, a run. I told you, D. I told you this. I've been telling you this for about a year. Oh, my God. Y'all want to come in here and cap? Okay, cool, 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 cool. You sold on Look, Brooklyn. You sold on Brooklyn. As long as KD is still walking around, I'm sold on Brooklyn. He's right? limping right now, though. KD is hurt. He be all right. All listen, right. He's, he's listen. It don't matter. It don't matter where the place is. They could be eighth place, bro. They're the most dangerous eighth seed. I can't stand with Harden get like this. Harden get this little way, and he when he don't get his way, he start wild like a little hoe. So, he so you, my so you and shooter, y'all blaming this on James Harden, really? Sure am. I sure, <laughs> sure, sure am. You knew, bro. He knew. You knew. I mean, things happen, bro. Come on, bro. Oh, I ain't signed up for this. Basically, is what he tried to tell me. I ain't signed up for this. Um, I'm I'm doing a lot of carrying the team, and we supposed to be going for a ring. When both these Negroes got hurt, and KD had to do it by himself, I ain't hear no complaining. As soon as he get in that little that that little space, all of a sudden it's a problem. 42, 42, what you think about this, man? What you think about Brooklyn's um, success or lack of? Seven game losing streak. Like, it's getting pretty crazy. Thank right you. Now. Like, yeah. It's ridiculous. And I'm sitting here trying to figure out D Money talking about James Harden complaining about he didn't sign up for this. He didn't. He did not imagine coming to Brooklyn and having to play without Kyrie and KD. That Kyrie was the selling point. For KD to even come to Brooklyn, because most was talking about KD linking up with your team, shooter with New- the Knicks. But wait, wait, we did not see Kyrie Irving complaining his first year in Brooklyn when he carried the team while KD was injured. James Harden is soft, bro. He is softer than Wonder Bread. Like he is not no. He, he don't even got a champion DNA, bro. We done seen it his whole career, bro. Wow. He. he he want to hang around rappers and be an Instagram model and all that. Get him on. <laughs> yeah, he he want to buy rappers honey buns and stuff. You know what I mean? The purses. That's what he wants. I promise you guys, if <laughs> James Harden goes to Philly and link up with Joel Embiid, James Harden will win a championship before Kyrie wins another one. Kyrie's never no, going to win another championship. No, he won't. 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 What? Are, are, you talking about ben, are we talking about Ben Simmons going to, to Brooklyn? Yeah, Ben Simmons goes to Brooklyn. 
Um, no, that they, they, he's in the worst position that he is. What is Ben Simmons in Brooklyn going to do with just Kevin Durant? Um, a lot. I mean, they don't like Kevin Durant. There's more shooters there than just Kevin Durant, Ooh. bro. Pat been crazy. Ooh. And when um, Joe when Harris? the white boy get back, when the white boy give it, when the white boy get Joe back, Har- Joe Harris is a bum. Look what he did last year in the playoffs. He choked. Now he's hurt. Hold on, seven minutes. Hold on, seven. Hold on. We not thinking about the dynamic. If Ben Simmons goes to Brooklyn, right? Ben Simmons will be the primary ball handler, so he opens up the floor for Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant. There's, no, there's not going to be any Kyrie shooter. Let's be clear. Both James Harden and Kyrie is out the door. They're not. They didn't offer Kyrie the extension. So nine times out of ten. I don't see those guys returning in Brooklyn. So you're stuck with Ben Simmons, Kevin Durant, and a couple supporting factors. I don't see the impact in that. They still have a half a season to play together. Ben Simmons and Kyrie will still play together for half a season. So you think... (laughs) Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Not to cut you off, D. Go ahead. Go ahead. ahead. So you think that they're going to get this trade done before the deadline? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they are. I'm looking at next year. You're looking at this season. I'm saying if it happens this season, I honestly, if for for me, the way that Daryl Morey be playing, it probably is not going to happen. But um, if it does, I mean, if with Ben, with Ben, bro, they still have a shot, bro. I don't see how the hell. It, how do they have a shot? with teams like Chicago and Milwaukee and Miami playing as well as they playing in the East. Chicago is not playoff proven. Chicago is not playoff proven. They're not playoff proven. Outside of Ben Simmons shooting woes, we forget the floor general that he is, the defender that he is, and he gets to the paint whenever he wants to get there, bro. Wait a minute. Now, and Ben you Simmons... you have Kevin Durant there, too, as well. Ben Simmons you know is saying? a good passer. I'll give him that ability. But let's not act like he's the best decision making. This is one of the main reasons why he's out of Philly damn near because of his decision making and his mentality. That's, we that's can't true. we can't act like he's going to go in Brooklyn and be this uh floor general like a Chris Paul or Rajar Rondo because he can pass well. No, his decision making is is terrible. Hold on a second. Kevin Durant not- is the ultimate is the ultimate safety net. You know what I'm saying? You think so? I, I think so. Russell Westbrook didn't think so. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. We're not go, go ahead, go ahead, bro. Go ahead, go ahead. My bad, my bad. We're not going to act like Doc Rivers is not one of the worst coaches in playoff basketball. That's he true. is horrible in the playoffs, bro. That's true. He has the most Game 7 losses as a coach, uh, probably all time, I might be wrong. No, Somebody you're, right. Gotta look. you're right. You're right. Absolutely. He's a horrible playoff coach. And he's he's yeah. also he's also blown more three one leads than any other coach in NBA history. That's a fact. That's a fact. And I know seven. I know seven. You don't do it. What ifs? You deal with facts, right? So I, if I were to say that Ben Simmons were to be able to have at least a twelve footer at his arsenal, it changes things. But we will never see that. Unless he's on the floor, right? So, I mean, for him, if even if he adds that to his arsenal, why would I give that to Philly? You can't convince me. You can't convince me that Brooklyn is still going to miss a piece having Ben Simmons and Kevin Durant. I don't. That's not even with the supporting cast that they have. That's still not enough to win the Larry O'Brien Trophy. Hold on, and don't. What if they get Steph Curry? They Steph. I'm gonna let me say his name. What if they get him back in the trade? We don't know the other pieces that's coming with Ben Simmons. It's not just gonna be Ben Simmons now. But Ben, Ben is this okay? I don't. Ben will give you triple. Ben will give you twenty ten and ten, bro. He's a three time All Star. If you give me twenty ten and ten, and KD drop as a walking thirty bucket, bro, and then you have the way that Pat, you got uh. Damn near maybe six play, six uh, player of the year, and Patty Mills. I don't know, bro. You, you might. I'm not gonna say it's it's set in stone, but you might have a fighting chance. At least for this year. I know the salary cap and stuff is a mess. I'm not thinking about next year right now. We're trying to win one. Right. I just don't see it. I I, I don't see <laughs> no way, no how. Brooklyn is coming out of the East 
representing the Eastern Conference nor winning the championship no matter what happens. I just, the chemistry is not there. And even if you do addition by subtraction, I still don't think they got enough time to gel uh, with a new team and make some noise. Like, it's, it's too many teams in the Eastern Conference that's pretty much locked in and ready to rock. So, to seven, me, seven, this... You drink. Do you drink seven? Not at all. Okay. Well, I, I'm, I got to think of a friendly bet on this. I eat uh, wings. I eat wings. You eat wings? I eat buffalo wings, yes. Okay. Is, so <laughs> we, 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 can, we can definitely do a buffalo wings. We can whatever, definitely. Whatever you I'm yeah. telling you. See, my thing is this, man. Does defense not win championships? It does. It sure does. So what are we talking about when we're going to, when we're having a conversation about the Brooklyn Nets? What I tell you last year, I said if I'm putting up 150 points, you got to match that. You said that, and I'll never forget <laughs> you saying that. But what we, I swear, but what we have seen time and time again, you can only get 130, 140 something points if you have all these guys on the court, and it has only happened 16 times, which is pathetic. If you ask me, this Brooklyn Nets whole experience has maybe been the the biggest disappointment in NBA history when you talk about super teams oh, and nah, stuff like nah, that. Nah, you wait, no, nah, no, nah, you're not doing that. We're not doing that. That's the hold up. Fun. I'm putting this above the 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 Lakers with uh Gary Payton and Carl Malone as far as disappointments of all time. That team probably was the most disappointing of all time. Over this one? <laughs> Yes. No. Bro, way. you had Paul Malone, Gary Payton, Kobe Bryant, Shaq, Rick Fox. Nah, come on, bro. But those guys had already won three chips in a row. So we're talking about KD, Kyrie, bro? and James Harden, all who have something to prove this year alone. None Yo, of those guys are defending champions. We talking about Carl Malone, one of the top three or top five. Power forwards of all time. We all talking about yeah. right. We talking but, about Gary Payton, one of the best defensive point guards we probably seen. Come, we talking Kobe. Yeah, but you talking names though, shooter. Look at Carl Malone and Gary Payton in that season specifically. And Carl Malone was hurt for a part for a nice portion of that year. Those guys were not literally in their prime when they linked up with the Lakers. And again, the Lakers are coming off of a of a three peat. We're talking about KD, Kyrie, and James Harden in their prime right now, playing in Brooklyn. I've never seen a talent put together like that as far as a three and them not succeed. But wait, we, we forgetting Gary Payton was a part of a Miami Heat championship after that. Come on now. So was Shaq. So was Shaq. But so was Alonzo Mourning. Like, that whole thing came together for, for as far as team chemistry. I'm not trying to knock Gary Payton or nothing. I don't want to take anything away from him. But he wasn't the glove when he was playing with the Lakers. Carl Malone wasn't the mailman when he was playing with the Lakers, not to me. So wait, so wait. Gary Payton, when the Heat won the championship and Gary Payton was on the team, that was what, 06, right? That was 06, correct. All right, so the Lakers was in the finals with that team in 2000. So that was six years later. Gary Payton played a role on a championship team. Come on now. Don't you got do a that. point. You got a point. You got a point. But again, six years prior to that, in Laker uniform, we saw the production. There really was none. We did not see the Gary Payton from the Supersonics in the purple and gold. He was just a, a, a role player, so to speak. Well, when you got the great Kobe Bryant there, you know you got to take a step back because that is that is the great one of the greatest things we ever seen in history of sports. He's up there with Michael Jordan. He's up there with Tom Brady. He's up there with John Elway. Kobe Bryant was something special. Now, now, this is my last thing I want to really talk about. There was a trade that happened. The Clippers traded Eric Bledsoe, Justin Winslow, and Keon Johnson and a future second-round draft pick to the Trailblazers for Norman Powell and Robert Covington. So the Blazers no longer have Norman Powell nor Robert Covington. There's talks about C.J. McCollum being on the trade block. Where does this leave Damian Lillard? 
He's out of there. But first off, this is what I want to say, right? I want to say a couple things to that. The rich get richer because the Clippers, they gave up nothing and they got two crucial pieces. Norman Powell will be on the team till 2026. So that means he will get a chance to play with Paul George and Kawhi Leonard. Robert Covington is a free agent after this season. Then you get to, I feel bad for Chauncey Billups. He gets his shot to be a head coach and the team just gets blown up, bro. Breaking news out of Houston, bro. <laughs> this is crazy. I don't know what they're doing. The Houston Rockets have made it clear to James Harden that they would welcome him back in Houston if that was ever in the playing cards. Now, we just saw a week ago Houston trying to get back Russell Westbrook in a possible trade for John Wall again. What's up with the Rockets trying to go back and revisit history with these guys. And do you think that there's a reality that James might go to Houston? Zero chance. And the only, the only reason why I could understand the John Wall, like on Russell Westbrook trade is because them probably the only contracts that somebody is going to trade for those contracts. Cause they have the two worst contracts in the NBA right now. Yes. So you can't get nothing else for them. So, I, and if I was Houston, don't mess up a good thing. Do not fire your coach. Let him get time and let them young pieces develop because they got some guy out there. What's his, um, Singal, I think you pronounce his name. Yep. He was, um, training with Hakeem Olajuwon. Then you got Kevin Porter Jr. Then you got, um, I think it's Jalen Green, if I'm not mistaken. So you are sold on the potential of the young Houston Rockets. Not really sold on the potential. We see this this thing happen in the NBA far too often. People get these young pieces that they need to hold on to, but they blow it up just to get a superstar or just to get a star. Let That's these young people get some time and develop in maybe two, three years, Houston could be a middle of the pack playoff team. Well, the Lakers did it. They got rid of their young core to bring in Anthony Davis, and they brought a championship home. So what you got to say about that? You mean that paper championship when, the NBA <laughs> was when it wasn't even supposed to be a season? It was just supposed Yikes. to be Yikes. Because we seen what happened when the real competition happened. Packed up in the first round. Bye-bye. Against the Phoenix Suns? It, now, let's be honest. If the NBA season would have got canceled the way it was supposed to, dealing with what we were dealing with in the world, there would be no LeBron bringing no championship to L.A. Wow. LeBron would have went through his Laker career with no championship. You think so? Yeah, and the only thing that would have stopped that was COVID. Now, granted, they still found a way to make the season go. That was his best opportunity to get a ring with the Lakers. The way Phoenix is playing, the way Utah, well, Utah, they they blowing up before our eyes. Teams got stronger, and, and everybody is not trying to have the super team. They got one or two good pieces with young developing talent. Right now, the Phoenix Suns are number one in the NBA, sitting at 41 and 10. But I'm going to keep it real. <laughs> I got respect for them. But I don't fear Phoenix. I don't. I know they represented the West last year. I know they got the best record this year. I do not fear Phoenix. And I feel like if the Lakers wasn't banged up last year, if LeBron was healthy, they wouldn't have lost that first round to Phoenix. Chris Paul couldn't even shoot for the majority of that round. So how they lost to Phoenix in the first last year is still baffles my mind. You know who Phoenix' biggest test is going to be? When they run into that oil machine of Golden State. Because them young pieces that they got, plus Clay and... Nah, bro. I'm it's sick of y'all. I'm sick of y'all with this Golden State talk. All right, man. Peace to my NBA family. It's your host, Seven Mitchell, with the best of seven sports talk. I just wanted to take this time out to say thank you to each and every one of you guys for so much support for the podcast. I hope you guys are really enjoying some of the outside the box angles we take, bringing you in these NBA storylines. Please don't forget to like and share. Most importantly, rate the podcast. You can follow us on social media. All the links will be in the description. 
And if you would like to contribute to the Best of 7 Sports Talk platform, we have merchandise available as well as links for the merch and donations will be all in the description. Once again, thank each and every one of you guys in the NBA community for supporting the show. This is Seven Mitchell with the Best of 7 Sports Talk. Let's talk some NBA action. Yo, they're they done. Go to state is done, bro. Y'all need they, to stop it. They got Gary Payton's son turning into a defense, lock him down. They got the Kaminga, he's starting to develop. Then you got Clay getting his form back. Then you got Steph just being Steph. Like, come on, man. Yo, Steph, Steph just a week ago was having his worst shooting year of his career. And Clay and- Thompson. He's up and down like a damn roller coaster at King's Dominion. I'm not listen, nothing has changed my mind as far as Golden State. Once Kevin Durant walked out the door, I knew the Golden State Warriors, no matter whether they move cities, got a new arena, new uniforms, they're not going back to the championship, bro. That's a done deal. So they, y'all need to cut it out. To win. They are the favorite to win the championship right now. I they don't are. see how. And right now they're in second place. They right behind the Phoenix Suns. They sitting at 40 and 13. They're a game and a half out of first place in the Western Conference. They do have the second best record overall in the NBA. The Chicago Bulls, who are number one in the East, they're sitting at 33 and 19. Memphis is 36 and 18. So Memphis. Technically got the third best record in the NBA. What do you think about John Morant and the Grizzlies? I'm 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 happy for them because you know I'm happy them because Memphis was always a sleeper team back when they had Zach Randolph and Tony Allen and all that. They went through their little two year, well, couple year thing where they was bad. I like seeing teams developed and win. None of that star chasing. We about to get it out the mud. So shout out to Memphis, man. They'll beat Golden State. Hell no. That. They don't. Nope. They Memphis nope. won't beat Golden State in a seven game series. Shooter. Nope. 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 You nope. you mean a healthy Golden State with Draymond Green, Wiseman, um, Steph or all of Give me all you got. Nah, Steve not- Kerr. Give Steve Kerr on the sidelines. They could have home court advantage. I don't think that Golden State wants to see Memphis. Who's going to stop John ja Morant? Clay. They 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 going they going to adapt the old old thing that they did to LeBron. Let him get his numbers and let's lock everybody else down. That's all we got to <laughs> do. Yeah, I agree. If any, if a team has a chance to beat Golden State in the playoffs, your supporting roles, your supporting cast is going to have to step it up. It can't just be a one man show. So no matter who it is, I agree with that. How you feel about this, Julius Randle? potentially, allegedly, requesting a trade. Now, reports are coming out of New York that the Knicks have shown some interest in Sacramento's Durham Fox for Julius Randle, even though Sacramento just announced not too long ago that they were trying to keep Fox. So I'm iffy about this whole situation with Julius Randle because he wants to stay in New York. Usually when players are unhappy or when they're struggling, they want to change the scenery or they just want to leave altogether. He wants to try this thing out and continue on. And he played excellent in the beginning of the year. But y'all New York fans have just changed on this guy, switched up on him like I've never seen before. So I'm a little bit lost on this whole scenario. What should happen? I'm going to tell you why what's happening to Julius Randle has happened to Julius Randle, right? Number one, any Knicks fan that is watching Knicks games could tell you his body language is fucking horrible. It's mm. horrible on the court. Number two, Knicks fans are tired of him bringing the ball up, turning over the ball, throwing his hands in the air, and not even running back on defense. Number three, Tom Thibodeau is one of the most stubborn coaches of all times, bro. Like, he's just stuck in his ways and is hurting the team. That's why everybody is like, I right, Julius Rental. You got to go. So if Julius Randle is the problem, Kimba Walker is not productive. And now we're talking about another head coach for New York being the issue. 
I think the problem for this organization stems far deeper than the locker room. It's clearly still Mr. Dolan. No, I'm not saying Tom Thibodeau needs to be fired. What Tom Thibodeau needs is he needs a voice that he listens to to change. Like, you can't just keep running out the same lineup and we getting ran out the gym. Like, yo, change it up. We too predictable. People know what's coming. Hmm. Change your style. You, It's too outdated. Like, we got can't We traded a first-round pick for Cam Reddish, and you playing Taj Gibson. Taj Gibson, like, 45, bro. I could still see New York trying to get those three back that played in Duke, Cam Reddish, R.J. Barrett, and Zion Williamson. Maybe you and I spoke on that before, but do you see any chance, maybe, that New Orleans might package something to get rid of Zion, and, and maybe Zion will finally get to come to New York? Think that could happen? Maybe. I ain't going to lie. I want to see him come back because it's too much rumors about weight problems. He don't work out. I don't want him to come to New York and then he just flame out. Like, it's just like he's a he, he leaves the league in like three, four years because he don't take his weight serious. He don't do nothing. Nah, I got to see him play and play a full year and then be like, all right, bring him over because if anything we seen in the NBA – People with a lot of talent that don't take this weight thing properly and they just flame out. Right. 